Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, A Monk in Cloud. So in the previous video, we learned about multi-tier architecture, also called as single tenancy. So which is, which is built for a single organization, if you ask me. Now in this video, we will discuss about multi-tenant architecture. And as it is becoming more popular as organizations welcome digital revolution while keeping the overall application and operational cost really, really low. So the software as a service model, the SaaS model is constructed upon the multi-layer architecture where an instance of the software and the accompanying infrastructure caters to numerous customers. Within this framework, each customer utilizes the application and the database in a shared manner with each tenant being isolated by the unique configuration, identity and data. So they remain invisible to each other while sharing the same product itself. As multi-tenant SaaS providers are responsible for everything from hardware to the software, SaaS products offload an organization's responsibility to the application's maintenance and updates as a SaaS provider takes care of everything. So each organization that is a buyer of a SaaS product is considered a tenant here. So these tenants can customize their user interface using a configuration without any code changes. As multiple customers shares a common infrastructure, they benefit from scale, which further lowers their cost. Some of the most popular SaaS providers are Salesforce CRM, Jira, and Slack. And you can also consider Google Workspace and Amazon Connect, right? So if you see this architecture diagram, there are two different organizations, or you can call them as tenants. And they are using the same software and the infrastructure, whereas the SaaS vendor providing access to the application layer they they allocate a unique tenant id to each of these organization so th this uh, this architecture that you see the architectural design shows the presentation layer providing a user interface and the application layer holds the business logic and the data access layer each tenant will have data level isolation with one of the following method so the data is isolated with one of these following methods that you see uh, now, right? One is database level isolation. The other one is table level isolation. The next one is row level isolation. As the name itself says in the data level isolation, each tenant has its database associated with the tenant ID. So when each tenant queries data from user interface, they are redirected to their database and this model is required if customer doesn't want a single shared database for compliance and security reasons. Next one is table level isolation. As the name itself says, this isolation level can be achieved by providing a separate table for each tenant or each organization. So in this model, table needs to be uniquely assigned to each tenant. For example, with the tenant ID prefix, right? When each tenant queries data from user interface, they are redirected to their tables as per their unique identifier. Next is row level isolation. All tenants share the same table in the database in this isolation level. So there is an additional column in the table where unique tenant ID is sorted against the each row. So when an individual tenant wants to access or access their data from their user interface, the application data access layer formulates a query based on the tenant ID to the shared table. So each tenants get a row that belongs to their users only, right? So now you might ask me, how do I select the isolation level that I want, right? So the selection of isolation approaches is based on consideration around org organization's compliance, security, cost, tenant uh, constructional requirements and so on, right? So it's so important that you find the cost value proportion in many users as they need to subscribe, right? So that is very, very cri critical in this scenario. The cost comparison should be calculated based on the total cost of ownership when making a build versus buy decision. Makes sense. 
So this is because building software is not the primary business of most organizations. So the SaaS model is becoming highly popular as organizations can focus on their business and let the experts handle the IT side of it, right? So that's all I had for this video where I wanted to show how a multi-tenant SaaS based architecture is built in the industry. And as a solution architect, you need, to, you need to have confidence while going for the interview and you should be aware as to how multi-tenant is working and what are the isolation level that we have when it comes to the databases and the security. All right. So that's it for this video. Thank you. And I will see you in the next one with another architectural design pattern.